So for my Grind of Legend this month, so far I've only been playing three decks. In fact, I used uh, basically versions of Assassin, Archer, and Sorcerer to grind a Legend. Uh, it was the fastest I've reached the Legend so far to date. I did it in just 72 games. Um, and that's all I've been playing since, which is really, really rare for me. I normally play an abundance of decks because I get kind of bored with them pretty quickly. But I'm having a lot of fun playing these lists or variations of these lists. And I think they're really good in the current meta for different reasons. So I thought, you know, we're halfway through the months now. Maybe I should do some deck spotlights on the three that I've been playing. So uh, right out of the gate, um, this one is the Sorcerer list. I call it Average Sorcerer for a number of reasons. It's kind of a play on words. So um, it's a mid-range list. In math, the term mid-range is actually, if you have a statistical data set, uh, you take the average of the lowest point and the highest point, and that's called the mid-range. Um, also, this is very similar to your average mid-range uh, sorcerer list. So with all those play on words and fun stuff, hooray, this is average sorcerer. If you're not familiar with mid-range sorcerer, what this deck list typically tries to do is use efficient creatures, typically those with ward, to make favorable trades in the early game and establish control of the board. Uh, Daggerfall Mage might be the poster child for this deck, but there are certainly other creatures that do this. And then you kind of follow up your control of the board uh, with high stat beefy creatures like uh, Young Mammoth, uh, Preserver of the Root is a cost efficient creature later in the game, uh, Dragon Tail Savior is also typically a, a lot of stats for its cost, and you kind of just snowball from there, take advantage of your uh, control, take advantage of uh, typically, you kind of want to lock down the field lane um, and just continue to push. Now, there are some utility creatures that you run, so like Shadowfen Priest is obviously in the list, Shrieking Harpy is in the list, um, things like that. And then for your late game, uh, right now, the list that I've been running is running three Bone Colossus and three Supreme Atromancer. Uh, those creatures are basically armies in and of themselves. So you use your efficient creatures to take control of the field lane and establish that, and then you continue to push that advantage, and then if they clear your field lane, then you can pop up a whole new army. Or if you still have a presence in the field lane, uh, sometimes creating an army in the shadow lane then makes them have to decide which one they want to fight for. Uh, you know, if you can make them have to Dawn's Wrath one, but you still have a full lane on the other side, that's kind of a victory. Um, also, if you're trying to push off Dawn's Wrath or push off Unstoppable Rage, um, Wrath of Sithis is in this list, and he is fantastic. He's been kind of better than advertised, at least for this list. Um, and Atromancer does the same thing, right? Uh, if you can Bone Colossus, you know, if you have a field and they deal with it, and then you Bone Colossus and they deal with it, and then you also follow it up with an Atromancer, chances are you've made them spend all of their resources at that point. So uh, it can be a brutal, brutal series of events between, you know, turns like six and nine. Um, this list has been really good for me because, for the most part, uh, its toughest matchup is traditionally like Control Spell Sword because that has all your hard removal that ignores wards. Um, it's been pretty good against Mage, um, pretty good against some of the other things. Uh, it's very good against Unstoppable Rage decks. That's the appeal to this. So if Unstoppable Rage has been bugging you, um, I would consider trying this out. Uh, ward creatures obviously don't die to Unstoppable Rage, and in fact, if you're worried about like that nasty breakthrough damage or your opponent draining, um, they don't drain and they don't deal breakthrough damage on creatures with ward. And then the other reason it's really good against Unstoppable Rage is again, Wrath of Sithis can uh, make it more difficult for them to play Rage on curve, it can make it more difficult for them to play a creature and Rage at the same time. Um, so a well-timed Sithis, as long as you have game awareness and you know when they're going to try to do it, can go a long way as well. And even if they pull it off, as long as you don't die, right, um, being able to just respond with a Bone Colossus to refill the board, respond with an Atromancer to refill the board, is oftentimes still enough pressure, even after a Rage, that you can push through. So... Again, if Unstoppable Rage is giving you fits, I would consider trying a, a list like this. I think it's very good for that matchup. Um, the big downside to this deck, though, is that if you lose control of the board, so if you get behind, it does not have many comeback mechanics. So fighting for that field lane is very, very important. And 
Uh, you want to mulligan as such, right? Like you don't want to keep your end game stuff. You need to have those early efficient threats to establish a presence, take control of the field lane, and then push your advantage. So uh, anyway, this is just the first of the three lists I've been playing a lot. Um, this has some flex spots. You'll actually notice some of the lists in the video differ from uh, the list that I'm showing. That's because I've been going through some changes. Um, I think the list I've settled on right now runs Mentor's Ring, but that has also been a Spooky Ghost. That's also been a Lucian Lachance at times. Um, right now I'm running three Bone Colossus. At one time I was running two and one Nahagleave because I was seeing a lot of Control Mage. Um, Nahagleave's pretty good against Control Mage, but pretty bad against anything that runs Belligerent Giant, which is a large portion of decks because that card is very, very good right now. So. At the moment, I've opted for Bone Colossus uh, in place of Nahagleave, so just a straight three Bone Colossus, but um, basically there is some wiggle room in the list, right? So you can feel free to experiment. Uh, anyway, as always, whenever you do the spotlights, next up is some games. Uh, I hope you enjoy them. Thanks for watching, and uh, you know, until next time, may you walk on warm sands. I don't think we keep any of these. Blackfall, huh? So, Blackfall is uh, a very good. I hate playing that for like no additional value, but but he's a very good control player, well known for playing control. By RK's beard. This day will be mine. Too late for you. All right. Not unexpected. I needed that mammoth last turn. Confound you. All right, that's fair. I would protect the hist. This one's not looking uh, like it's going to go in our in our favor either. You must be cleansed. By bark and so I think we do that mostly because I don't want him drawing the extra cards. We're gonna give him enough anyway, but I wanted a body as well and the Daggerfall didn't feel like it was cutting it. Here's where we hope he doesn't have Don's Wrath. It's too bad we couldn't do this in reverse and have Atro and then, <laughs> uh, then Bone Colossus for all those triggers. I think we're doing a decent job of pressuring him. Manticore is almost online. So that's a bit of a problem. There's a plan. There's always a plan. Alright, that's also annoying. We're gonna want to deal with that somehow. Um Let's do that. By the eight, they will meet their makers. Let's do that and then split like that. Okay. 
kind of interesting you chose to buff that and not the Bruma. Like, he has to know I'm dying to eat that Bruma, right? And it doesn't even... I mean, I guess it saves the uh, Gristlehide if he trades then with the Bruma, but I feel like the health is more important than the cards at this point. Like, he's got a fistful of cards. here because we can't uh, can't take it out so like I'm not even sure you can win like even if he dons wraths here trades here, this can't trade with this, and this swinging plus Atro. He has to basically get a full clear, and then also clear everything from my next Atro. Raised My dead. Yeah. No, I don't know if I actually even have like a list for that. Um, we definitely don't want those. This might end up being decent just because he's on Crusader, so it's. Potentially aggro? Oh, gods. This is not actually looking too good out of the gate. Welcome, friend. Uh, if it's aggro crusader, and I have to suspect it is, and uh, I will push we're going first back. like this, we're going to end up being stuck as the quote-unquote control player quite a bit here. So now we really have to hope he doesn't have a charge answer for this. So I would very much like to deal with that rift thing. We'll see how they like someone who fights right. back. It's promising that he didn't execute the harpy, but he might have been holding it for this. Because even the aggro uh, lists are running execute now to plow through Dark Guardian. I like our Nope. Just goes the tier route, eh? That was a very, very good top deck for us in terms of trying to take back control of the board. I wonder if this, uh, since he's running tier, I wonder if this is Larson's list. Let none defile our temple. Um, or just like a. Uh, now I legitimately don't know list. Still a couple of turns away from that mattering. I think we just do this, if I'm being honest. Shale, take you. I'm not too worried about the three damage. This is a this is an interesting spot. I shall end the blessing. Right? Because like I legitimately don't know what we're up against yeah, at the moment. No what. Yeah, it would have been nice to prevent that, I guess. I mean we do have the firebolt answer.
<laughs> yeah. Let's do that. Let's do that. I think it's actually this. I know we have Dark Guardian there, but I think it's that. That's the better, like, tempo. Try to retake control of the board plane. Ew, Golden Saint seems pretty good. I mean, we're gonna obviously do that. Careful there, friend. Let's punch him. And wall up over here. Now we could obviously have a javelin or something, but I think that this is the appropriate play just because we also wanted to try to get the health lead. So if he has a removal, a he has play. to like play the There's removal the and then the forest will not suffer your yeah, presence. Swing, but Alright. I mean that was Totally legit and fair. Let's get this out of the way. We're gonna have some choices here because we could like preserve her and tome, or we could not hug leave, which would really gum that up. I feel like preserver. Hmm. Well, let's see. I guess let's see where this happens. Let's do this. Your blood will spill. I will let's do that. I think that's better. Hola, Lucky. Surprised you're still awake. There's nowhere they can hide. Okay. The hunter becomes the hunter. Alright. I understand where you're coming from, sir. Your blood will spill. Sheor take you. Your blood will spill. Elements. That should seal it. That's too much board presence. Like even He could he could literally, like, immolating blast, crushing blow, whatever's left, and you still lose, so. Alright, there we go. So, uh, up against Warrior, I think we ship you back. I'm having the ring, we're not likely to trigger this, but I'm gonna hold out hope. Well, now, now everything kind of depends on that. Let's hope he's uh, maybe a slower warrior. No. Nope. beard. This day will be mine. By Arcase beard. This day will be mine. Nope. Confound you! The longer the odds, the sweeter the victory. Confound you! Alright. So we're gonna do that because if he decides to trade with the Mammoth, then we still have health lead, and if he doesn't trade with the Mammoth, then we can maybe swing? Get health lead? Hey, Shaman! Too 
Well, I think we run the Royal Sage train at this point. I see you're in need of my wisdom. How am I? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. It was a long day at work, but otherwise doing well. Annoying. I think he figured out the whole uh, health leave thing that we were working with. You can't escape. Um. Well, hold on. I can either make trades or I can whack him for the health lead again. Cause I can I can trade here. I mean we, we can just do this now because it doesn't matter either way, right? So like we can do this, and then if I whack him, I have health lead, and I can play another Royal Sage, maybe get Ward back. Um, or I could make a I could like Shadow Fen Priest this and make a trade. It's just probably in my better interest because with the Preservers and not Hug Leave, I think I might have a better end game. You must be cleansed. You can't escape. So I guess we're gonna go that route. <laughs> Whack it. So the Arl is kind of a big deal. Can't get the health lead back though. Confound you, mother of mud. I think the worst part about my hand right now is that I literally. I mean, if he has Vigilante, he can trade. I literally have, like, no good saturation options because I don't have, like, any of my three drops. Oh, well, there's the belligerent we were worried about. There's the belligerent we were worried about. Um... Mother of mud. I would protect the hist. I mean, I guess we do that. If he's got another belligerent or something, we're basically boned anyway, right? a very, very good play for him. What's our best course of action? Again, like, we're just... Me not having many two or three drops is really making the saturation being an issue. Like, the Royal Sage has kind of gummed up my hand this time. Like, the ideal scenario right now is like a three drop, a three drop, a two drop, right? I mean, I don't think there's any argument about that. That's what I want to do that turn. Instead, I'm stuck playing not leave. I mean, I, not that Nahagleev is uh, bad, but 
Gonna get some sleep? Fair enough, man. I know you're tired. Tomorrow's the weekend, though. I mean, we do have Atromancer, but, like, he's about to play, in all likelihood, just, like, a whole host of stuff. Just triple sage and, uh, triple priest. Although, that looks like the, the priest might be coming in handy here. Um... You must be clear. This turn, anyway. I would protect the hist. Doesn't make it any less annoying, though. At least we took the health lead back. Now those royal sages matter, baby. <laughs> ah. Though, with the board, if he doesn't have, uh, like, some form of removal or whatever, we actually have enough to threaten lethal, too, so. You wait till this one's done. Alright. That's legit. So you can, what, trade and then trade, I assume, instead of going face? Yeah. That's a good turn for him. It's a really good turn for him. Um... Well, what do we do to not die here? I can Dark Guardian, Daggerfall, Royal Sage, or I could Dragon Tail, Double Royal Sage, and hope for charges or wards. I mean, I don't, I'd be able to trade with one of these, but then I don't have, unless I roll a guard, I don't have any other guaranteed guards like I would if I played Dark Guardian, but Dark Guardian doesn't do a ton. Daggerfall's not like aggressive. I think we go with the aggressive option here. The longer the odds, the sweeter. The I think we just do it. I see you're in need of my wisdom. There's one charge. I see you're in need of my wisdom. There's one guard. Two guards. You can't escape. And I think we do this just because we have the two guards. Like, that's a really risky play going face there, but it means Atromancer wins. So, as long as we don't die this turn, we, we likely win. I would have really preferred him to not hit a Prophecy there, for obvious reasons, but... Alright, so you'd have to do eight more damage. Close ranks, let nothing through. Well. Mother of mine. As long as I Is he breath. Got wood orc? No. Okay. Whew, he was make was making me nervous. Elements, I summon thee. I mean, I guess we theoretically had it with Breakthrough. I just really wanted to play some elephants, you know? 